been fortunate to be, you know, be here during those, as we call it, glory days. Um, so all I'm trying to do is make sure these guys know that uh, it's possible to happen again. Um, so my experience is I'm just going to try to instill in them uh, from the discipline that we had in the past, try to let them know that, hey, that discipline will carry over into wins. How would you classify the uh, Clancy's defense? What are, you, what are you guys looking to get accomplished this year? Well, the biggest thing we're going to do, and I wasn't here last year, but the things we've talked about is simplifying. Um, make it easier, make it less, and get great at what we're doing. Um, getting back to fundamentals, down to this is how you tie your shoes and put your socks on, to this is how you get in a stance and how you push off the front foot and reach back with the back foot and so on and so forth. So um, a lot more details starting from the ground up uh, in regards to technique, and then we start talking about the fundamentals of uh, secondary play and concepts. But the concepts are not first right now. What have you seen from Britton Allen so far? Uh, Britton Allen uh, is doing well. Um, obviously, we did pick him up as a uh, safety, but uh, going through uh, winter conditioning, he's shown uh, a lot more athleticism. Uh, so we're trying him at corner and, and so forth. So uh, very pleased to this point, but it's day two, but pleased. How much of a challenge is it for you not having the bodies this spring? <laughs> Hey, my job is easy. I work with what I got, <laughs> you know. So whoever is getting the opportunity, just like you saw, 44 and 36, who are two walk-ons that just signed in like yesterday, <laughs> and we're excited that they're playing. And I'm going to coach the hell out of them. So to me, it doesn't matter who the individual is. Um, but yes, I, you know, the numbers aren't what we want it to be. But we're, we're working on it, and I just work with what I got. Have you ever been in a situation though where so many guys are out? Yeah, so many... I've been there. I've yeah. been there, and then, then I can't worry about it. I can't control it. I can't change it. So all I can do is work with what I got and make the guys that I have the best uh, player they can be. What's going to be key for them, kind of breaking the learning curve for younger players? Uh, uh, there's no secret remedy. They just got to work. You know. Um, we're slowing down the install. You know, literally, we only have four defenses in: two the first day and two the second day. You know, so the slowing it down, uh, the the meeting room stuff. Uh, that's the easiest way to get them to start learning. Um, tomorrow we'll install a couple more, so that we'll have a good nucleus of plays or calls for for Saturday. But it's about slowing it down. In years past. Clancy's defenses, much was expected of the secondary, particularly mm -hmm. the corners mm -hmm. and the isolation. So you talked about really emphasizing the technique of the position. How important is it for them to really understand those concepts and why it's important to play with players? Yeah, and, and that, that leads into what I've been saying in regards to why we're slowing it down. Um, we're talking about all the details in regards to cover three or cover or man free or whatever the case is it's why are we running it what's the weakness so not only are you just telling them what to do you're explaining what the weaknesses are and then why we're asking you to do what you need to do so that you can excel in the particular coverage and why are you using the technique because we feel this technique is best for this situation so it's just breaking it down even more because nowadays, millennials, they want to know why. <laughs> so we have now structured back in the day, was just tell them what to do, shut up. Now we explain why, and they're like, oh. So now they can play and use their own mental in regards to, okay, I understand why I'm doing what I'm doing, and then they create their style. How involved were you in talking to Greg Johnson and getting him back in the fold here? I'm involved, <laughs> you know, but it, uh, the head man takes care of most of that. Um, my deal is simple. I'll speak when I need to speak to him. I'll give him my advice. He was great at it in regards to taking his time and trying to sort it out in his head. Uh, sad he was, had left, happy he's back. What kind of boost is that, though, that to have him back, given what we talked about before? Oh, yeah, no, it's good. I mean, obviously, he's a talent. You know, he's a potential starter. You know what I mean? So for me, yeah, it's awesome. Um, I didn't, uh, obviously didn't coach it last year, but I recruited him, wanted the hell out of him. You know, so I know what his talent is. You know, so I'm pleased that he's back, and I'm excited to work with him. You talked about restoring the excellence at USC. How important was that to you when you first got back here? 
Oh, it was great. It was huge. I mean, as soon as you, you get back, you walk in the building, and I'm like, oh, God, you know. Um, but from the standpoint of just because I'm back doesn't mean, okay, all of a sudden we're great. You know what I mean? It's me getting my mindset to saying, okay, I think these guys need a little bit of help. I got to figure out where they are to then push them, okay? Okay, some guys got it. I have a handful of guys in my room who got it. And then now I got to get these other guys to follow their lead and or, okay, I'll be the leader until you start figuring it out. So it's just that process. Is and it, it's not over, and it's just started. Is there a responsibility, though, in your hands, do you think? In Being, my opinion, yeah, Coming yes. back here? In my opinion, yes. Am I the sole person? No. <laughs> but in my opinion, for the group I have, I want to get them to believe that they can be great. And the biggest thing I learned before I left the last time was that you have to get them to the point that they don't worry about winning and losing. All they worry about is playing. And that's it. No emotion, no up and down. I'm going to win the play. And then I go to the next play. You know, don't, don't look at the big picture. Just lock in on this thing right here. So, yeah, how have you guys as coaches make sure that they're not caught up in distractions? Talking that's about That's a process. Yeah, that's a process. It's just the repetitiveness of explaining that to them. Um, and then when situations come up, show them examples of it. Um, but it's not our one speech and I got it. It's a forever continuous thing. So clearly the meeting room is going to look different once fall comes around and you bring in the incoming class. Oh, yeah. But with the amount of experience, young experience at the safety position, um, <clears throat> do you see the difference between what you guys articulate in the meeting rooms versus what you're able to show out here yeah. in yeah. terms of how much they're able to progress yeah. because of that experience they have before injuries? Exactly. Well, you can't, you know, experience is experience, and that comes with time, and I don't control that. Um, but for the initial guys that I have, the Talanoas, the, uh, the Paula Mayals, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the, the Chase Williams, those guys, they, they, they kind of got it in their head. They understand it. They, they took the time to uh, learn. Uh, Jordan McMillan, perfect example of a guy who didn't uh, service team the entire year but paid attention and came in the last game of the year and made an interception. That's a perfect example of a guy who's just, hey, I know my role, but I'm gonna always know what's going on, and when my time comes, I'm gonna be ready. So that's a solid four mentally. Now, okay, keep learning, and then the new guys start teaching them the same thing. So we had heard some, I'm sorry. No, good one. We had heard some buzz about you being linked to the job, and then kind of quieted, then you came back in the picture. What was the process for you, and, and how did that all play out from your end? Uh, in short, it was long, but I was glad at the end result. <laughs> I'm gonna leave it at that. But it was a process, um, and it, it, it's just, it's my history of hiring people is there are a lot of great coaches. So it's not necessarily just about oh how much I know. There's a mixture of chemistry and and all those things that come into play. Um, and sometimes you got to take the time to sort that out. When you got the call, though, and it's SC, a place you've been, you, you talked about all that. What was the first reaction when you, when you knew that was an option to come back? Oh, yeah. The opportunity. Yeah, it was. I was, I was on cloud nine. I, I know exactly where I was. I was, I was out recruiting, and then uh, my former employer gave me the opportunity to stay here for the weekend because uh, my family was still down here. And I was at my sons, little league uh, flag football game. And I'm on the sideline and my phone rings. I was like, <laughs> you know, so that's that's where it happened. And I was beyond excited about the potential. Um, you know, and then from there on, it was just, you know, hoping that it would work out. So I'm glad it did.